course, people wanted to ask questions that were off the football field. He addressed that briefly, said probably would have been best for him just to go home and go to bed that night, and that's about it. So despite some tries to get him to uh, re-engage there, uh, he was way too smart to take that bait. Um, you know, obviously, he is getting acclimated to the offensive coordinator role. Uh, you know, coming back off of the road as, as, you know, we got out of the May evaluation period, recruiting as the OC is a little bit different than as the wide receiver. He's certainly involved with more people now because of the fact of, uh, you know, you're taking three and four man wide receiver classes, but now on, on the offensive side of the ball, you, you, you've got your fingerprints on a whole lot more. He's not seeing really any different reception at schools or anything like that um but you know it's it's just a matter of uh, of, of getting acclimated and and you know he's an, a super confident guy so i don't think even if he were struggling and feel like he was drinking from a fire hose that he would would tell us uh but uh you know everything seems to be going well there uh one of the uh, summer enrollees brandon ennis seems to be acclimating well we heard so much about carnell tate losing his black stripe everything else to a lesser extent noah rogers and bryson rogers but now brandon ennis there they have their full complement of weapons and uh you know everything seems to be going well there and then one last note from heartline uh you know he was asked about well what would happen if you guys went to like you know four wide outs and run out of 10 personnel and he's like you know we don't we're better. We're a better team when we have a tight end out there. You know, we run a lot of twelve, but you know, it'll certainly want to have one out there. And practice time is so limited in the college game that you can't. You don't have time to screw around with something that you're not going to run. And I would not expect to see them going out there and and, and running out of the ten personnel. So, no need to practice it. Yeah. Uh, just think back to the run and shoot days of the uh, the Houston Oilers when you had Lorenzo White out there and. They, they could run it a little bit, but that wasn't their game. Kevin ran down uh, Brian Hartline's uh, conversation with everyone yesterday. We'll throw this one at you, Kevin. David Greenshield, thank you so much for the contribution, sir. One of our great uh, listeners and viewers. Has Ryan Day or Brian Hartline given any indication that they will put more of an emphasis on the running game, especially early with a new quarterback? We're at the weird intersection of if they're not going to tell us, and of course they're going to tell us. We want to be a balanced team. We want to be 50-50. Uh, that's all going to be there. Uh, how they're going to go about it, uh, I don't know why you broadcast that for Indiana and Notre Dame and teams in the front half of the schedule to, to, to see anything. But uh, there certainly is going to be an emphasis on getting the running game right. Now, does that really equal 50-50? Is, is that – is that is that treading water for Ohio State? Or, I mean, even under the best of circumstances, is this a 60-40 team? And when we talk about those numbers, are we talking about attempts or yards? Because, again, a big play really just skews the numbers and throws them off. But there certainly is a lot of work being done in terms of getting the running game right. You know, you can put all this emphasis on the running game you need to make sure that your center is getting the ball to the quarterback right and working well with the guards, that your tackles are sealing off, that you're getting all these things that you want, that, you're, that your tight ends are being able to get out there and pick up those those key blocks. I mean, Kate Stover certainly through his career has shown his ability to do that. There's a lot, you know, there's a lot that goes into it. But you know, I guess just to answer, you know, David's question on, you know, just on the top line, of course there's going to be an emphasis on – on getting the running game right, but you also don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater. You've got to be willing to go with what is working at that time. But with that being said, you don't want to get into your toughest game slash games of the season and not be able to run the ball. But we can look back at last year. And for all the concerns about running the ball, I'll, I'll say this. They had no healthy backs really against Michigan, except Dallin Hayden, who didn't play. And, um, they, you know, they ran the ball better than most teams did against Georgia, to be quite honest, in the, in, in the Peach Bowl. And, uh, you know, while that necessarily wasn't, they didn't get that 250-250 game that, that they strive for or whatever, um, you know, I'm expecting good things out of the run game. And I think the other thing to remember is the screen game is also part of the run game. That's how the, that's how the coaches view it. And so some of the passes are runs. The RPOs, 
is viewed as part of the running game as well. So those yards count for the rush yards for the coaches. They may not count for – they don't count the stats or the people that you know that want to see more running uh, that doesn't necessarily sit well with them. But uh, they, they're, I think they'll be um, plenty uh, in tune to the run. Steve, Doug is serving up this one for you. Does anyone know if Avery Henry is going to rejoin the team this year? I think they're cautiously optimistic that uh, Avery will have uh, some type of role with the team this year as he came out triumphantly about three or four weeks ago and, and said that uh, his cancer seems to be in, in some form of remission at this point. And so that uh, is a great thing. Obviously, everybody's been rooting for him. And uh, Justin Fry uh, spoke at, at good length yesterday, the offensive line coach, about how that whole ordeal has kind of played out and uh, how Avery has attacked it and uh, got the treatment he needed. And uh, it seems like it has, he has responded, his body has responded to it in a positive manner. Now, I understand this. Uh, my father has gone, undergone treatment for cancer and is actually uh, in the hospital today uh, due to an infection that, you know, he's having a hard time getting rid of. And, and all the treatment that you take for cancer can undermine some of the other aspects of, uh, of protection in your body that, uh, uh, you know, can, 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 can uh, hurt you going forward. So I guess what Justin Fry said is they need to get with the doctors and find out what Avery's body can handle at this point. Um, there was some talk, perhaps message board chatter, that maybe he would get a medical waiver and that his football career would be over. But it doesn't seem to indicate from Justin Fry yesterday that that's the case. So uh, that uh, they're going to work uh, the long game with him. Whether he contributes this year or not really doesn't matter. And I don't think anybody was really counting or projecting him in the two deep anyway. But perhaps in a year or two, maybe he'll be in a position where he can can get on the field and play some for Ohio State and and uh, would be such a, a great comeback from the, the prognosis that he was given. So I guess it's a wait-and-see approach. But as it stands right now, from what we know, his cancer's in remission, and they're going to try and get him back into the fold, baby steps. And, uh, you know, he'll probably be on the sideline, not in pads is my guess, uh, for a lot of the games this season.